folks. Welcome into that betting show for May 22nd, 2019. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. He's Teddy Savranson. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at right side VP. The Raptors, Teddy, get even on Tuesday night. And in Major League Baseball, applications are out there for close. There's a lot of teams looking forward to it. Let's get right into the hot topic of the day. The Raptors bench, Teddy, comes alive last night in Game 4. Take a look at this. Norman Powell, plus 29. Serge Ibaka, plus 24. Fred Van Vliet, plus 25. The bench mob leads to the victory, 120 to 102. Even up, going back to Milwaukee. Impressive game, Teddy. Yeah, and Van Vliet was the difference maker. I mean, he really was. This is the guy that since the start of the Eastern Conference Finals went into yesterday's game 7 of 44 shooting, 3 of 25 from beyond the arc. He lost it. Well, he had a kid. Uh, he, had a, uh, you know, he had the birth of his second child uh, on Monday, flew back yesterday, said on the plane, I just you know chilled out and thought about what I had to do. And then he hit everything last night. Uh, as you mentioned, he banked in the three and then it got going for him. You know, Kyle Lowry, I think he needed it. I think those type of things relaxed him a little bit. You know what he needed? That banked in three to go in, stuff like that, just to get in some kind of a rhythm. Obviously, it wasn't just Van Vliet and Powell and Ibaka, but it was the way that trio outplayed a Bucks bench that was better in each of the first three games. That wasn't <laughs> the case uh, yesterday. Wire to wire job and really... You know, we've seen one previous no-show from the Bucs here in the postseason. That was that game one against Boston. Be interesting to see how Milwaukee responds with all of a sudden this series getting very interesting after it looked like the Bucs had the Raptors on the ropes. Yeah, Giannis, team worst, minus 19 for the Milwaukee Bucks yesterday in that loss, but he still posts up a 25 and 10. It's going to head back to Milwaukee, as we said, Thursday night. Favorite early line look there, Teddy, that's odds.com. Minus seven with a total of 218. Obviously, it's a best of seven series, which now flips over to a best of three. We know how good the Milwaukee Bucks have been. Still, Teddy, a prohibitive favorite here, heading back to Milwaukee to win this series. Well, I mean, the Bucks' longest losing streak of the season was two games. In the regular season. Well, here they are. They're on a two-game skid. They went, I think, to, yeah. And that only happened once. They were 22-1 and one straight up off a loss. They were 19-4 and four ATS off a loss prior to last night. The market certainly expecting a strong bounce back from Milwaukee. Of course, we'll preview that game thoroughly on that betting show tomorrow. So you make sure you tune in. Teddy, job fair for closers as MLB is now taking applications. If you watch CNN, if you watch Fox News, it's an unbelievable market to get your resume out there and find a job. Closers are wanted. And how about in the NL East alone last night, Teddy? Ninth inning, the Phillies, Braves, and Marlins all blow leads. The Marlins actually pull out a winner in the 11th inning uh, in their baseball game. Give Caleb Smith another great performance. But taking a look, Phillies ahead 2-1. to one. Nobody's available in the bullpen. Oh, yeah. In a game you probably should want to win, Juan Nicasio comes out and immediately blows that game. Three to one, the Braves against a team that struggles just to get base hits in the San Francisco Giants. They overcome that and take the loss in that game. It's amazing that we're looking forward to, Teddy. But there's one closer that's sitting out here that post-June 1, probably going to find himself a roster spot here. Maybe. And then again, on the other hand, Kimbrell was not effective down the stretch last year. And the Red Sox used him like they would use a player who you're trying to burn out and never worry about him again. So uh, I wonder if Kimbrell's going to get the money. And I wonder if any of these teams that need closers are going to pay the money to get him. I'm not convinced Kimbrell's going to be the answer. And if he's not, you just paid a whole lot of money <laughs> uh, for a guy who is going to cost you games, not win them. Look, there's nothing more frustrating for betters or for teams than blown save chances. You know, you win the game, all you got to do is close it out. Oh, no, it's a pick six on the final play. You know, that's what a blown save is. The Braves pen cost me one last night. It was a right side. Nope, now it's not a right side. But uh, uh, Dante's nine levels of hell, there is a special place in hell just for relief pitchers. We'll all get to see them there someday. Yep, us sports bettors there have minds like an elephant. We will never remember, Teddy, the three straight games that we were credited with a W for blown saves, but the one that went against us, we will scream the rest of the summer. It's a long baseball season. Each and every night, it's a grind. Come on. You lose one last night, Teddy. Guaranteed tonight, you're going to get that one come back your way. How about the Blues heading to the Stanley Cup? Let's talk a little bit of NHL action here on that betting show today. St. Louis from last place in the standings. I believe, Teddy, it was January the 2nd, the single least amount of points in the entire NHL. Somebody goes out to Las Vegas, has a little convention, says, you know what? I'm a Blues fan. Let me put down a couple hundred bucks here on those St. Louis Blues. 
Lo and behold, they're in the final. What an amazing <sighs> run. Yeah, and hockey can do that. And I'm I'm honestly surprised that the books continue to offer stuff like 250 to 1 on St. Louis. There is enormous liability here in Las Vegas on the St. Louis Blues. They will be rooting for Boston like nobody's business because why? It doesn't take many 200 to 1 or 250 to 1 tickets for you to face a whole lot of liability on a team. And, you know, uh, as we saw <laughs> with the insanity uh, in British soccer a few years back. You know, as we saw with the insanity of the Rams going from last place team to winning the Super Bowl at 200 to one. We don't see those type of odds very often anymore. And when you do, you better make sure it's a team going nowhere. St. Louis Blues have gone somewhere. And there's a lot of bookmakers here in town. They'll be rooting for Boston <laughs> come next week. May 22nd, Teddy. Look, it's almost football season. We get it. We're going to continue that march on sportsbookview.com to get you ready for opening day in the NFL 2019 NFL team preview. Today is those Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 66 to 1, Teddy, to win the 2019 championship. 30 to 1 to win the NFC. And the team total this year for the Bucs, six and a half. If you remember last year, you got out hot. You saw some Fitz magic. Winston was suspended. Oh, my goodness, what a shocker game on Teddy to win over the New Orleans Saints in the Dome. Then they come home and beat the defending Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. All is good. Topsy turmoil trading back quarterback after quarterback during the season between Winston and Fitzpatrick. Didn't work out that well. You know what ended up? Their cutter got fired. Bruce Aaron's going to take over as head coach of the Bucs in 2019. What do they do in the draft, Teddy? They go defense. Devin White in the first round, defensive back Sean Bunting in the second round, and load up again with the defensive backs Jamal Dean and Mike Edwards in the third round. Tampa Bay Bucks. say, hey, look, we know the class of the NFC South is going to be the New Orleans Saints. Bucks. look, I like the head coaching move that they made going from Cutter over to Bruce Aarons. Always a big fan. I think they're a little bit talent depleted right now before they can really make a move. But, hey, it's another referendum this year on their quarterback, Jamie Winston. Yeah, and, and this has been a division where worst to first happens <laughs> on a surprisingly consistent basis. And – from a power rating standpoint, there's no question. New Orleans is ahead of uh, Tampa Bay. Atlanta's ahead of Tampa Bay. Carolina's ahead of Tampa Bay. On paper, this is a team with a whole lot of growing pains in a pretty tough division. However, it's not just Arians. You know, I like the guys he brought in around him. Todd Bowles is the assistant uh, defense coordinator, I should say. The, uh, you know, Bowles, yeah, he crashed and burned as a head coach. I don't think it was all his fault. The guy's a good defensive mind. Byron Lefwich who showed signs as an offense coordinator, now gets a full-time job in Tampa. I think these are guys that the players will relate to. You know, Bowles is a player's guy. Leftwich is a player's guy. Uh, I, I think, and Arians is as well. So, uh, whereas Cutter, uh, how do we say this politely? Mm, they tuned him out pretty early. <laughs> uh, I'm not convinced that's going to be the case, obviously, with the new coaching staff. We talk about Tampa last year. And it all starts, you know, every bit of handicapping for 2019 starts with 2018 because you want to know, were they actually this bad? Are we starting from a point where, no, this team's actually better than their record or maybe they were worse than their record. And that's your starting point for making adjustments. Last year, the Bucs were 0.2 yards per play. That's not typical. Plus 0.2 yards per play. Not typical of a team that wins five games. All right. Now they got crushed 0.8 yards per rush. From a QB rating standpoint on defense, it was a disaster. QB rating a lot of 110. That was worst in the NFL. And they were minus 18 in turnovers, which was near the bottom of the NFL. Those two stats alone explain a disaster campaign. When you're giving up opposing QBs to 110 QB rating and you're minus 18 in turnovers, it's going to get ugly. Very tough schedule last year. Slightly easier this year, but still a little bit tougher than league average. Based on this year's season win totals, please don't look at those aggregate numbers from last year when you're looking at strength of schedule. I'll give you the good numbers. Watch sports, uh, uh, that betting show every day, and you'll get access to the numbers that I put out. But, you know, you talk about the free agent signings, you know, you bring in Donovan Smith, and, uh, you know, 41 million bucks uh, as a left tackle. And then Shaquille Barrett at linebacker, Rashard Perryman at wide receiver. We're not talking about huge names, but we are talking about a team that was riddled with key injuries last year. I don't think there was a team in the NFL that had a worse injury situation than Tampa did on the defensive side of the football. Just by being healthy coming into camp, this team's going to be better. You talked about the first four draft choices all on defense. There's point spread hope for the Bucs in 2019. Heck, there might be straight up hope for this squad as well. As I mentioned, the NFC South has seen quite a few turnarounds in recent seasons. 
Yeah, we saw Gerald McCoy get cut by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, picked up in Dom- Dominican Sue. JPP, you know, a defensive end, got a neck injury in a car crash a few weeks ago. We'll see if that mangs up. But hey, see if Bruce Harris can turn around. He's the guy that's going to be up for the job. It'll be interesting to see. Tomorrow, we'll pick another team in the NFL to preview to get you ready for opening day right here on that betting show with sportsbookreview.com. Let's get back to a little bit of Major League Baseball overnight line movers, FBRodds.com, the single best place on the internet to check those line moves since they're always moving. And how about this, Teddy? The Orioles, what a shocker, continue to be major underdogs and today no different Austrian markets open up minus 215 and head north of 230 Teddy this is a home team getting two to one at home here as we sit total of 10 and a half Sabathia versus Straley well you want the Orioles today <laughs> nope. me neither neither do the markets you know of course in last night's loss Baltimore set an all-time MLB record the fastest ever pitching staff to allow 100 home runs that came in 48 games the history of Major League Baseball 2000 KC Royals had the previous mark. That was 57 games, okay? In all the history of baseball. So Baltimore is not just worse, they're way worse pitching staff. And Straley is a guy that everyone wants to bet against. Um, You know, he hasn't lasted more than four and a third in his last four starts. Baltimore's bullpen behind him is a disaster. And the Yankees lineup is on fire. Yeah, I can understand the support for the Bronx Bombers. Even have to lay minus 160 on the run line with the Yankees today. That might be the better way to approach this game. Teddy, let's up the ante here with the Houston Astros favored by 300 or more for the second straight day. Picked up an easy victory yesterday. Coming back for more here, the White Sox and the Astros, minus 330s to minus 340s, a total of 8.5. Nova versus Cole on paper, once again, a huge mismatch. But these are outrageous numbers that we're looking at today, Teddy. Honestly, I think it's short on Houston. You know, we are talking about the best team in baseball, the Astros. You know, you make case for the Dodgers or whoever else. Houston's the best team in baseball right now. With their ace on the hill, you know, Garrett Cole, what, he leads the majors, 93 strikeouts, just shut down the Red Sox in his last outing. Uh, you know, has been absolutely dominant. Houston's lineup's on fire. They won, what, 12-1 uh, and won their last 13 ball games, And they're doing that without Altuve and Springer in the lineup. Both guys should be back uh, later in the week. And they're going up against a bottom feeder team with one of the worst starters in Major League Baseball. And I even know they give up nine runs again. Uh, that's the second time in the last month Nova allowed nine runs in a game in his last outing. You can understand the price. You can understand why even at minus $3, Houston's taking money. Porcel and the Sox get a little bit of early action here on Wednesday, Teddy, getting filleted yesterday by those Blue Jays. But if we take a look today, open up at 140, now up to 160. Total of nine and a half. It's going to be Rick Porcello versus Aaron Sanchez in the Dome. Let's see if they can bounce back here, because as we know, Toronto, not exactly great at putting win streaks together, Teddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I just talked a minute ago about the Bucs and how good they've been off a loss, you know, uh, to the tune of 22-1 and one straight up prior to last night's loss <laughs> uh, to Toronto. The Blue Jays are the other end of that spectrum. The Blue Jays haven't won two in a row since they swept Oakland back, what, the last week of April. You know, it's been a while. <laughs> That's two in a row. You know, <laughs> one win and they lose. One win and they lose. Uh, you know, Aaron Sanchez is a guy that's dealing with blister problems. He had blisters in his last outing. Although um, the one thing with Sanchez, he's saying it's happening more in cold conditions. That's not going to happen, obviously, in the climate-controlled Rogers Center. But we are talking about a hurler with a 6.30 ERA, and he's 0-3 in four May starts. And, you know, Porcello's been pretty good, although he had two very ugly starts in Toronto last year. And for his career, he's got an ERA over 550 going against these Blue Jays. So I can understand the Boston money, not my money. Watch what you bet here on that, excuse me, on that betting show. Take a look tonight, Teddy. Back to the scene of the crime here. Maybe it brings up a little bit of bad omens from last night. The Braves look to rebound from a ninth inning collapse last night. Giants sit at plus 148 and a lot of steam heading in the Braves' direction today. Total of seven and a half, 945 on ESPN Plus from Oracle Park in San Francisco. The Braves are 26 and 23 on the season, second place in the NL East. If you take a look at the Giants, 21 and 26 on the season, going to be fried, or should I say Max Freed versus Samarja tonight. Yeah, if Freed gets fried, uh, then you can call him mm-hmm. fried. But other than that, we got to call him Freed. But, you know, he's been really good. I mean, he's coming off six innings, a shutout ball uh, against the Brewers uh, last Friday. Of course, the final score of that game was 12-8, to eight, which speaks something. <laughs> you know, at times, that bullpen behind him has been spotty, as was the case last night when the Giants rallied for three runs in the bottom of the ninth. You know, a two-out, two-run walk-off single by Panic, uh, you know, to get the win. But certainly Fried is a guy who we like. Samarja is a guy who the markets hate right now. His last six starts, 
He's only gotten two outs past the fifth inning. He hasn't thrown more than 90 pitches in any of those ballgames. He's not lasting deep. He's not eating up innings. And, of course, the Giants line up behind him. Yeah, they had a rally in the ninth last night to get the four. This is not a good lineup. And you think about all the money they're playing Pablo, you know, Sandoval and Longoria uh, at third base. And they've shown signs. Neither one's getting the job done on a consistent basis. And San Fran, for me, team I have a hard time backing. But, God, I mean, this team is a little bit much for me to get involved with right now. Orioles minus one or, uh, uh, Atlanta minus 140? Maybe. What are we looking at now? Minus 160s? Higher than that? Yeah. That's a little bit rich for my blood. Yeah, we'll see if they can bounce back to another opener on the mound for the Rays on Wednesday versus the Dodgers. Didn't work yesterday, Teddy. Top of the first inning. The Dodgers did cash in with a run. Looking at the Rays at plus 118 with a total of 8.5 tonight. MLB Extra Innings Package live from the Dome down at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. Dodgers 32-17 and 17 for the season, 13-11 and 11 away. The Rays 27-18 and 18 for the season, 12-11 and 11 at home. Going to be Hill versus Stanek tonight. We'll see what happens in this game. But, hey, look, Dodgers been rolling. Let's see if they can do it again tonight. Sure, and we talked about it yesterday with the matchup of the hottest lineup in baseball against the team with the best ERA in baseball. Well, <laughs> yesterday, advantage Dodgers. Obviously, Kershaw shut them down, but the lineup again, seven runs uh, last night, and the Rays were scoreless into the seventh uh, in that ball game. And now, you know, Rich Hill, who really an interesting question. Hill was as good as any pitcher the Dodgers had last year. You know, start out this season – he had a knee injury. He was hurt in camp. He gave up 11 runs over his first three starts, you know, and, and uh, you know, 11 earned runs, and then he had gave up unearned runs as well. Well, <laughs> he's been a lot better uh, of late. You know, last Friday at Cincinnati, struck out 10, just two hits over six scoreless innings, and he just 84 pitches in those six innings. Hill's quote, we really just went back to the drawing board, stuck with fastballs and breaking balls. Just getting the fastball down and throwing everything downhill so it opens up the top of the zone as well. Hill gets bet on, and Hill was not been bet on. That was a bet on pitch to start last time. And if you want to be proactive, maybe you jump on him here. I want to see it twice, personally, because he was so bad early on. Meanwhile, Tampa, you know, they're in a situation where, guess what? <laughs> uh, they're playing 13 straight days, and then they pay 21 games in 20 days after that. So the Rays are about to go up against it. Watch Tampa's depth and watch that bullpen. These bullpen games are fine when you have day offs and day offs. When all of a sudden you're playing 34 games in 34 days, these bullpen starts where you're getting five, six, seven guys into the game have a potential to have a negative effect if the starters aren't eating up innings. No interest in the Tampa side this evening. Yeah, Rich Hill, one of those guys, certainly not built on velocity, needs to pick his spots, and he was sensational against the Reds last time out. We'll see if he can duplicate it again tonight. Cole on Cole crime, Teddy, in the Windy City today with at Wrigley Field. Cole Hamill's going to face the Philadelphia Phillies for the first time since being traded. The Cubs, heavy favorite here with Hamill's on the mound, minus 160. And how about this total yesterday, Teddy? Seven and a half. Ten and a half today. You know what that means at Wrigleyville. That wind is blowing out. 8.05 p.m. tonight, MLB Extra Innings, live from Wrigley Field. The Phillies 28-20 and 20 in first place in the NL East. Cubs at 28-18 and 18 on the season. Cole Irvin versus Cole Hamels. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible that Hamels has never faced the Phillies. This is a team he won the World Series with in 2008 uh, and had, you know, a heck of a run uh, in Philadelphia. Uh, he's never faced his former squad before that changes today. Joe Madden talking about his starter. Hamill's having a good time out there. I love that part about him. He has joy playing the game of baseball. Plus, he swings the bat pretty well. Beyond that, it's just attack, attack, attack. And if something goes awry, he doesn't change uh, his patterns. Cole Urban, well, you know, he uh, threw a gem against the Royals in his debut. Last time out. <laughs> wasn't as pretty against the Rockies. Four runs uh, in six innings. Gabe Kapler, quote, we're really excited to give him opportunity. Uh, this opportunity. He's really earned it. He's not a dominator. He's a guy whose game is forcing the opposition to put the ball in play and get weak contact. And frankly, that quote right there, he's not a dominator. He's a guy whose game is to forcing the opposition to put the ball in play. That's not the guy I want against the Cubs lineup today. I can understand, especially with Hamels on the hill against his former squad. Be Chicago or pass for this better. Yeah, battle lefty should be interesting there. Teddy, real quick on a point like this. We have Cole Hamels, you know, storied history there in Philadelphia. You know, wins the 2008 World Series, MVP of the World Series run. 
Would you take a little bit of a handicapping in this, saying, you know, he might be a little bit hopped up for this game? Or do you say it's completely different because, you know, he's going against the Phillies, yes, but it is in Chicago where he's home. Maybe a little bit different if he faced the Phillies for the first time and it was back in Philadelphia? I mean, in terms of anything that I'm going to quantify and say this is worth five cents to the line or ten mm-hmm. cents to the line, I don't think it's quantifiable. I certainly think that, and, and frankly, I don't know if I want Hamels in Philadelphia where the heart's pounding. Da, 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 da. You know, let's just face the former team. He's in pretty good sh- form. Um, I guess that's my answer. <laughs> there you go. Love the answer, Teddy. And by the way, quantifiable, very good word. We can use that right now for Scott Boris, quantifying sending a 19-year-old overseas to try to avoid the draft process, getting his pitcher paid. If we take a look, he's supposed to be a second-round draft pick this year, and that is uh, Carter Stewart, who is going to head to Japan, making about $2 million average signing bonus, but he's going to be able to get close to $7 million over six years and to the outside, I say, well, why would he go to Japan and stay there for six years? Well, international free agency, at 25, you can become a free agent to head back in Major League Baseball, avoid the arbitration process, and get paid right away in the posting process. But once again, this is Scott Boris, who's probably been trying to do this for years to get somebody to go overseas. We saw it in the NBA with Brandon Jennings trying to avoid college for one year, go get paid, and then come back to the NBA. Should this start a line of players going to Japan, or maybe one of just those outliers there that we could take a look at? I don't know that there are many uh, kids that are 19 years old and say, yeah, I'm willing to sign a six-year deal to go play in Japan right now. Um, most American kids, and I shouldn't even say some kids from the U.S., there's a, something about living in the States that people want to do, you know, obviously. Uh, and when you say, all right, well, I'm going to forego that, and admittedly, hey, you're not driving on buses in single-A ball. You're putting yourself in a position to make more money down the line, and you're making $7 million right here. But to say this is going to be the start of something, where there's going to be a lot of kids going and playing in Japan, you know, it's a different world. I mean, yeah, they're on the same earth. It's a different world for an American ball player playing in Japan than it is playing in single A and double A and triple A ball. And I'm not convinced there's a lot of 19, 20 year old kids that are going to want to do that and especially do it for a six year span before they come back to the States. I agree, Teddy. And also, you take a look at you know the language barrier that you might have with going to America overseas uh, to Asia might be big. But the language barrier of sports gambling, Teddy, not a big deal here on that betting show for May 22nd, 2019. Your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. Once again, he's Teddy Savransky. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. We'll be back tomorrow as the association gets back underway. Good luck with your tickets tonight. <laughs>